well out there. Um, today I've already prepped my face with the La Libre Blanc shaving oil. And my razor is going to be this three-piece Clix razor, mostly Bakelite, the metal cap there. <clears throat> oh, here I go again, scratchy throat. I'll try to continue though. My blade on its third use will be one of these Rapira stainless blades. And my brush is going to be a brush that Timothy Abernathy um, restored, an ever-ready nylon brush that he put a new synthetic knot on. And my soap is going to be this Cher Monic, uh, which means uh, uh, shaving monk or monk shaving, or yeah, shaving monk in uh, Dutch. It's their 1778 soap. And I'm going to go ahead and try to get lathered up here. Like I said, I hope you're all doing well out there. Hope your week is good. Let me wet this just a touch. Oh, okay. Very nice, very nice. Oop, huh, getting lather all over. Oh boy. Yep, I'm really getting the lather all over here. I'll just paint it on here. The soap lathers rather well. I have two of their soaps. They both have, well, all their soaps have the same label, but there's different types. And uh, this soap has a mild, sort of a soapy scent. Mild, pleasant. And as far as scent strength goes, not a value judgment, but I would give it about only about one or uh, out of five, one or one and a half out of five. Excuse me, I'm going to try to get some of the soap off me. I, uh, I was flinging lather everywhere. But uh, I think I'm about ready to go here. This will be pass number one with the grain. I flipped this blade after the second use because, yes, I am a blade flipper. Sometimes that seems to help. Other times, not so much. Uh, I wasn't even going to do a video tonight, uh, but I missed doing one a couple of weeks ago. And... Um, well, I'm supposed to be up early tomorrow. We'll see about that. We got things to do. or something to do tomorrow. Do a bit of a Gillette slide here. This diagonal thing right here. Only about a day's worth of growth here. This is really nice soap, by the way. I'm going to show you that label again. I don't know what this is. Something, a church or something. Yeah, I guess it's a church. Cher Monic, Shaving Monk. So that same photo evidently appears on all of their shave soaps. But there'll be a little name printed up here. And this is their 1778 soap, like I said. So, uh, yeah. I'm using this nice, fairly mild razor here. Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Fairly early into the shave here, I can tell you it's uh, very pleasant so far. I lathered right out of the tin. You probably can't hear it, but I have prefab sprout playing in the living room on the TV. I don't know if it was their first album, but it was the only album of theirs I ever bought from circa 1985 or something like that. In, uh, England, and I guess in Europe, it was called Steve McQueen, but here in the United States, it was called 
two wheels good because Steve McQueen's estate, the late Steve McQueen, even then, uh, his estate threatened to sue them. So the album I know is Two Wheels Good. Uh, some of you across the pond may have known as uh, Steve McQueen. And the album doesn't really have anything to do with Steve McQueen anyway, but, but uh, it, some of the songs kind of have a nostalgic bent to them. And uh, nostalgia from of a time, I guess, when Steve McQueen would have been a popular Hollywood movie star. I don't know why I, all of a sudden I'm shaving and talking about Steve McQueen, but the subject came up somehow. Well, the name of that album in Europe, Prefab Sprout album. Prefab Sprout, I had heard about them before I ever actually heard them, and they didn't really play them on the radio over here, except perhaps on college and independent stations. And if you didn't live in a big enough city or whatever, or a college town, you more than likely were not going to hear hear this band. But, uh, who I, like I said, I have been playing out in the living room. More about Steve McQueen, though, when I return, and uh, I'll come back to you uh, freshly leathered for that second pass where we will go across the grain. Okay, hey, it's time for that second pass across the grain here. I was talking about Steve McQueen, excuse me, with the raisin. Um, I forget what I was going to say about him. Oh, yeah, he was, uh, I think he got his start, actually, uh, across the grain, by the way on an American <clears throat> TV show, a Western, uh, called Wanted Dead or Alive, where he played uh, a bounty hunter, but sort of a likable bounty hunter. Similar to how Richard Boone uh, played a likable uh, gunslinger on, uh, oh... I can't even think of the name of that. On Have Gun Will Travel was Richard Boone's show. So anyway. Then another band, British band that I was very fond of, The Who, their original drummer, Keith Moon, once bought a place in California next to where Steve McQueen lived. And Steve McQueen had to put up a fence to keep uh, Keith Moon's parties from spilling over onto his property. Kind of funny. And I guess Steve McQueen's first movie that was really popular was Bullet where he played some kind of plain clothes cop in San Francisco, I think. Yeah, well, excuse me. Anyway, <clears throat> in Bullet, um, hmm, Steve McQueen's partner was played by Don Gordon, who I'm not sure, but he might have been the only guy to die twice on the old Twilight Zone television show. I'm kind of giving it away, but uh, spoiler alert, I should have said. In both of the episodes in which he appears, he gets shot to death at the end, but uh, it's kind of interesting to watch how it plays out. Oh, I still got another side to my razor here to do above the lip. So I guess I'm more of a conversational shaver this week.
may have some big plans for this channel and also there's a possibility I don't know if it's remote or not but a possibility that I might be moving to another bathroom I don't know if that would be good or bad yes I live in a bathroom so I'm just gonna move to another bathroom right yeah. No, there's more to it than that. Possibly. Okay. Now. I'm quite enjoying this shave. <clears throat> Soap's not really dissipating too bad, but I'm going to go ahead and touch it up a little bit on my neck. A little pasty. I don't care. Uh, I've had really good luck with this soap, although this is just my second time using this soap. I'm pretty pleased with it, so uh, any errors are user error. Any problems are going to be user error, I'm fairly certain. Let's see, oh yeah. Still going across, I think. I'm not sure if I've paying, been paying attention to what I'm doing. Too busy talking about Steve McQueen, Prefab Sprout, Keith Moon. Richard Boone, Don Gordon. See, I remembered all that stuff I was just talking about. I'm capable of remembering things. But as per an old song that was very briefly popular on album-oriented rock stations here in the United States back in the late 70s, um, well, there was a song about a guy, he wanted to kill his wife. And uh, one of the reasons he gave for wanting to kill her reminds me of a little bit of, a little bit of myself. He says, she's so full of useless information and trivia. That's me all over. Well, I will be back uh, for that third pass where we will go do it with me, kids, uh, against the grain. Okay, it's time to go against the grain. Uh, yeah, Prefab Sprout, uh, I, I don't know if I finished saying this before, but uh, I had read about them before I ever actually heard them, and uh, at least one critic said that they were kind of like a cross between uh, Elvis Costello and Steely Dan, and I was already a fan of both of those, uh, well, uh, of Elvis Costello and Steely Dan. Elvis Costello, the uh, the artist, the singer, and uh, Steely Dan, the, the kind of band. I mean, uh, Steely Dan, yes. Um, and then Steely Dan kind of just became, oh, uh, Donald Fagan and Walter Becker, and sometimes just whatever studio musicians were free. And they demanded, of course, really good studio mus musicians, as did the record label at that time. Which here, before MCA bought them, it was ABC Dunhill Records. Excuse me. <clears throat> so, I don't know. Everything's connected somehow, or so they say. So, yeah, to some extent, all those things I was just babbling about are all connected in the entertainment world, I guess. And to a certain extent, I guess I was always spoon-fed by whatever was playing on the radio, uh, to a certain extent. Okay. Okay. 
Well, none of those things I was talking about are related to shaving, as far as I know, but uh, I guess they're an example of me speaking out loud whatever myriad thoughts were going through my head during this shave so far. I gotta be careful here going against the grain above my lip. Might take it kind of easy. I've found that these Rapira blades can be fairly sharp and not terribly smooth. Of course, your mileage may vary. And I am using a mild razor, but I'm just not going to go too crazy on that. I'll be back and then we'll do pickups. Okay, kids, it's pickup time. Pickup time, all right. Yay, all right. Time to do pickups or touch ups. Here I go. And I'm not going to go too crazy trying to get BBS because I've given myself some irritation lately. I'd be happy if I can get a couple of these trouble spots that are, well, particularly troublesome, I guess. Like right here, underneath the ear and along the jawline here. And I'm already experiencing, uh, not irritation yet, but a pretty fair amount of smoothness there. And if I can just keep a light touch on that and not go too, too crazy. Now, I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. Flip sides of the razor here. and Over on this side of my neck, when I do touch-ups, I tend to start out or focus on going down, whereas on this side of my neck, on pickups, you might notice that I start out going up or focusing on that. And I got eh, irritation there. How much of that's from this shave, I don't know. It seems to come and go, and then the lighting in here can be rather unforgiven. An unforgiving, I mean. Yeah, Clint Eastwood and the Unforgiven. No, it's not like that. That, by the way, was the name of one of his movies. Somehow he got into the mix. Rawhide. More trouble spots over here under this ear and along the jawline here. I'm going to uh, rinse the razor and do a bit of a slickness test. I'll go. I'll focus on going down over here. I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit. Again, I don't want to go too crazy. Over here, maybe I'll let's see. Yeah, I didn't flip the razor. Yeah, try to go up. And I'm, I'm just about done here because uh, this is a fine shave. Maybe it's a DFS, you know, darn fine shave. I'm cleaning that up a little bit for the kitties. In case there's any kitties watching, not that they haven't heard the other D word, but yeah, I'm gonna, that is actually pretty close to BBS. I always find something over here, especially, that I'd like to touch up just a little bit more, maybe. I don't know, I could go kind of, I say, I always say I'm not going to go crazy on this, but then there's always that temptation. Yes. Well, any other touch-ups I'll do after the shave, I guess. Oh, well, there's another place. Sorry. You may be able to still hear some feedback along there. Just so <clears throat> Sorry, it's just something that bothers me. That's quite a bit better. Um, I'm going to rinse the razor, rinse the brush, um, 
and uh, I'll come back and uh, I'll do some recaps and put the finishing touches on this here shave. I almost forgot, I uh, had to rinse my face too, and here's uh, the freshly laundered but still humble Mr. Towel to help us out. Ah, mm-mm, that feels good. Mm. Yeah, it does. I like that quite a bit. Had another towel in here while well, Mr. Towel was uh, in the hamper, but Mr. Towel is much softer, much softer than the other towel that I call Dr. Towel because he's got a, a, a D on him, you know, D or, yeah, Dr. Towel. Anyway, we'll put Mr. Towel back where he goes. That was really nice. Nice shave. Now, excuse me, sorry, you had to see the baldness there, the bald head. Um, okay, before before I got started here uh, off camera, I had prepped my face with a little Libre Blanc shaving oil. Another shaving oil that I'm running out of. I need to get more shaving oil of some kind here. Uh, let's see, my razor has been this three-piece, mostly Bakelite, Clix razor and a metal cap on there. In there on its third use and flipped after the second use uh, was this Rapira stainless blade. And let's see, my brush has been this Ever Ready, originally a nylon brush, restored by Tim Abernathy, who's a guy that restores brushes. He sells a lot of them on eBay. Um, he restored it with a synthetic knot. And, oh, let's see, my soap has been this sheer monarch um, Dutch shaving soap, 1778. It says 1778 right up there. And sheer monarch, which is, uh, means uh, shaving monk in Dutch, uh, I guess. And, uh, okay, let's see here. I'm going to think that about covers it so far. So I'm going to reach in here and, oh, let's see. I'll go ahead. I don't think it'll hurt anything. I'll use this Thayer's Witch Hazel. It has some lavender in it, but it's a very light scent. Whoa, I'm kind of, yeah, the camera's kind of bouncy, bouncy. Sorry there. Uh, the lavender's a very light scent, and it, does, it shouldn't clash with what I, with the soap, but, uh, well, anyway. They didn't have any plain Thayer's. At least the vendor I used was out of that, and they were out of another kind I wanted, so... I just said, yeah, I can give me some lavender. And this is uh, no alcohol in this, so it's just a toner. And uh, it's not, uh, oh, why can't I think of the word? It's not an astringent. So, there might be a little sting. I'm not sure what that's from. Might just be from overshaving or something. Okay, now I'm going to reach over here and get the, this is going to be my aftershave this time, the Petrolon Classic. I'll shake that up a little bit. And get the cap off here. Hmm, it's nice. Oh, man. Yeah, this is one of those aftershaves. Sometimes I forget how nice it is. I'm kind of working it in my hands here. Put a little on the wrists. A little behind the ears, on the temples, maybe even on the back of the neck. And here we go. This this might sting. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. I'm feeling the burn. But that just means that the aftershave is doing its job. There definitely is alcohol in there, and there is an astringent quality to that, but mm, that was just so, such a nice scent that uh, I'll show you this one again. I really like this. I'm about half through it now, but the Petrolon Classic and the, one of the ones that comes in a nice Art Deco bottle there. Okay, finally I'm going to reach over here. How am I doing on time? I'm still doing pretty good on time. Um, 
gonna use the Nivea Men Sensitive Post Shave Balm. I've got some of the original, but I'm running out of that, and I may need to get some more of that soon. And <clears throat> see that right there? That's more than enough. Okay. A little bit of the Nivea balms do go a long way, and they're very nice and absorbent. Uh, so anyway. Mm -hmm. So I may be kind of shiny for a couple of minutes, but yeah, it's been my experience that uh, the Nivea balms do absorb well, and uh, no parabens in them, at least not in the ones sold in the U.S., and probably the same in Europe. It seems to me that Europe often has stricter standards about food and drugs than we than we do sometimes. Uh, okay, hey, that's it. Uh, still got a little balm on me here on my hands, but I'm gonna let you go. Thank you so much for joining us, Chicago, huh? Yeah. Uh, anyway, I don't know. Uh, yeah, thank you, and uh, we'll hopefully see you next week in a bathroom somewhere. Peace.